where we're joined now from Cork by the Fianna Fáil leader, Michal Martin. Mr Martin, thanks indeed for talking to us on the programme. A lot of people Welcome today around. have spoken about Albert Reynolds as a, as a risk taker, a gambler, someone prepared to take a chance. But he was also something perhaps you don't always find with politicians. He was willing to make decisions and act on them. And that was crucial in relation to Northern Ireland, wasn't it? Absolutely. And I think when we talk about risk taking, I think he brought a, a breath of fresh air to the many issues that he dealt with and not least uh, the peace process itself. Uh, he was a decisive uh, leader. And I think Sir John Major himself gave him the the, the, the appellation today of, of, of a statesman because of the fact that he was prepared to take risks that maybe conventional politicians would not normally take. Uh, and he had a very clear single mindedness in pursuit of an objective. Mm -hmm. And in this case, the objective was clearly the cessation of violence because he was deeply moved by the impact that such violence was having on many families uh, on, on the yeah. island of Ireland um, and indeed um, in, in Britain as well. And, the, and I think it's interesting listening to Sir John Major there. Uh, the, the, the key ingredient, I think, was the strong personal relationship that he built up with Sir John Major, which I think led then to the very joint approach by the British and Irish governments to the peace process, mm -hmm. which fundamentally underpinned it through all its difficulties and through all its trials and tribulations. Well, that sort of consolidated relationship was absolutely vital. And I think Albert Reynolds deserves great credit for uh, achieving that with John Major. And I suppose it shouldn't it also be forgotten that he faced a lot of criticism, particularly for the speed with which he was willing to bring Sinn Féin uh, into the political uh, process. Um, and yet he was willing to face down that, that criticism and press ahead. He was, because he was clear in his own mind what he was about. I mean, he was about really uh, achieving a victory for constitutional republicanism, for uh, essentially the argument that the objectives of, of, of political resolution of the difficulties on the island can be achieved without the need for violence. Uh, and he did take risks and he did engage uh, with, with the Republican movement in, in, in the Northern Ireland and, of course, with loyalism as well. And it's always very interesting. And I have sp spoken to many people, the late David Irvine and others, um, about the impact he had on loyalist opinion and the degree to which he built up trust with them uh, and those on the nationalist side. Uh, and as he said himself, his word was his bond. And that very much was something that they would confirm. Uh, and I think that trust was also very important in bringing people along uh, towards the various ceasefires that ultimately paved the way for the substantial negotiations that followed that led to the Good Friday Agreement and led to peace mm -hmm. on it's, the island of Ireland and also to a much richer relationship uh, between Britain and Ireland, is, is uh, also, which is extremely important. Is it also the case, though, that that single-mindedness, that uh, determination, that tenacity was politically his undoing? He, in effect, I suppose, collapsed two Fianna Fáil-led governments, uh, and particularly in the case of that, that Labour Fianna Fáil government, people were left scratching their heads. Why did it happen? I agree. Uh, no, well, sorry, I don't agree entirely um, in the sense that I think history will, will, will judge that. I actually think, to a certain extent, obviously, he, people will say, and I heard people saying today that he was particularly... Uh, stubborn in terms of the appointment of the Attorney General. But when you look back on that and when you look back on, on the inquiries into that episode, I often think it was a great pity that that government broke up. And I think there was two sides to the breakup. It was actually a very effective government, the Fianna Fáil Labour government of that time, in terms of not just uh, the peace process, but in terms of the economy and in terms of social policy as well. Uh, and I think it was a, a great pity that it didn't continue uh, beyond the, the, the period, uh, um, beyond 1994. Uh, and I think history would need to study that in greater detail before we pass judgment right. okay. uh, on, on that. And obviously there were faults on all sides, but I think there were, there were other factors as well that led to that um, collapse. And okay, um, well. I, I certainly regret it because I actually thought it was a very progressive uh, government that achieved a lot on a number of fronts. Michal Martin, there we, leave. we were talking to one member of that government, Neve Brannock, who was on the Labour side a little later in the programme. But uh, thank you indeed for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.